Shalom, all praise the Habash Mehasha, the Blanus of the Apostle GMS. My name is Amnawa Alakam Natur in another lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to be focusing on Romans chapter 2, verse 16, when it speaks about the Most High judging the secrets of men. Now, let's get right into it. Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when the Most High shall judge the secrets of men by Yahawashah, according to my gospel, I want to go right to the point. So, it speaks about the Most High judging the secrets of men. What does it mean, the secrets of men? The secrets of men meaning the th things that are kept secret, things that are kept hid, things that are not manifested and made known. The Most High knows everything it is that we do, whether you do it in secret or whether you do it openly. So the secrets of men are going to be judged due to the fact that nothing can be hid from the Most High. So anything you do in secret, you will be judged for it because the Most High sees all things. And to give you a quick precept on that, this is the book of... um. Uh, Sirach, this is a website called artbible.info. This is Sirach chapter 39, verse 19. It says, I'm going to go right to the point. The works of all flesh are before him, right? The works of all flesh are before the Most High. Of all flesh, of all living beings, are before him. And nothing can be hid from his eye. So the works of all flesh, all things made of flesh, and things in heaven too, which are made of spirit, all things, all works of all flesh, before him, all things made of flesh, all of their works are before the Lord. And nothing can be hid from his eyes. Right. Nothing can be hid from the Most High's eyes. So the Most High sees the works of all flesh, and nothing can be hid from him. He seeth from everlasting to everlasting, and there is nothing wonderful before him. Right. There's nothing that the Most High has to wonder at. There's nothing in the eyes of the Lord that looked at as something that's extraordinary, because the Most High sees all things. This here is the word wonderful on Google. Inspiring, delight, pleasure, or admiration. Extremely good, marvelous. Nothing in the eyes of the Lord um, he has to admire. He has to wonder at. Because the Most High sees all things. Nothing surprises the Most High. Nothing surprises the Lord. You go to that word wonders. Look at the word wonder. See? Wonderful. A feeling of surprise mingled with admiration. There's no feeling of surprise or mingled with admiration in the eyes of the Lord. That's the reason why it says here in the book of Sirach 39 and 19, it says, uh, 39 and 20, excuse me, there is nothing wonderful, wonderful before him, nothing for him to admire or nothing for him to wonder at, meaning nothing that gives him a feeling of surprise mingled with admiration or unexpected or unfamiliar or, inex or inexplicable because the Most High knows all things. So going back, so we just read those two scriptures. And he's going to, and let's go back to Romans 2, 16. And the day when the Most High shall judge the secrets of men by Yahweh Shah. So the Most High is going to judge the secrets of men by Yahweh Shah, according to my gospel. So the secrets of men are going to be judged when the Most High sends his son, Yahweh Shah, to bring vengeance upon the earth. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12, and um, stuff verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Right, and that's the whole duty of man. To fear the Most High and keep His commandments. Verse 14. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. So every work is going to be brought into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So every work shall be brought into judgment. Shall, shall be brought into judgment. With every secret thing. Everything hidden. Whether it be good or evil. So if you're good, you're going to be judged on that. You're going to be, receive a righteous judgment. If it's evil, you're going to receive... It's the judgment is still going to be righteous. The most, all the Most High's ways are righteous. So if you're if you're um doing something, whether it be good or evil, you're gonna receive a a righteous reward for what you do, for what it is that you do that's good. That righteous judgment is gonna be a reward that you receive for your goodness. A reward, a reward that you receive for doing the righteous bidding of the Lord, for doing the bidding of the Most High. But the judgment you receive for something that if you do is that's evil. Is going to be a judgment placed upon you for the wicked act that you committed. It's going to be a punishment. You're going to be rewarded with punishment if you do evil, whether it be in secret. And whether it be good, if it's done in secret as well, you're going to be rewarded with what? You're going to be rewarded with blessings. Okay? Let's get another scripture. Now, we mentioned, um, I mentioned, it spoke about the secret thing, right? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 1. O Yahweh Shem Shah, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. So the Most High knows your down sitting and uprising. 
He understands your thoughts are far off. Meaning, he know he, he knows your down sitting uprising. Meaning, he knows your movements. He knows when you sit down. He knows when you stand up. He knows all of your ways. Thou understandest my thought are far off. Right, the Most High understands your thought are far off because the Most High is the one that's putting thoughts in your mind. Thou compasses my path with uh, in my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. So the Most High compasses your path. He's always compassionate about you. His spirit is always there. He compasses your path. And you're lying down, meaning when you're on a journey and when you're still. And are acquainted with all my ways. To be acquainted means what? To be familiar. So the Most High is familiar with all your ways. The Most High knows all your tendencies. Everything you do, everything that you have the tendency to do, even everything that you frequently think of and, frequ and frequently do and frequently say, the Most High is acquainted, meaning familiar with all of those ways. Nothing can be hid from the Most High. That's another scripture I'm thinking of. Um... King's heart is in the Lord's hand. <laughs> I think it's the first verse of some chapter in Proverbs. Okay, third verse. No, that's not it. Wait one second. King's house and Lord's, Lord's hand, he turned them with whatever he will. There you go. Proverbs 21 and 1, first verse. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Heart meaning your mind. Hand, heart is the Hebrew word lab, which means mind. Hand is the Hebrew word yad, which means power. So the king's mind is in the power of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. As the rivers of water, he turned them with whatever he will. So this is the most I turn the rivers of water. He makes a tide go out into the shore. It makes it the tire rec recede back in to that body of water. He did the same thing with the mind of the king. He turned it with us whatever he will. So the Most High controls your mind. Okay. Let's get another scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 16. Excuse me, Luke 8 and 16. No man with he, when he lighteth a candle covereth it with the vessel. So you don't light a candle you cover it with a vessel. That defeats the whole purpose of you lighting the candle. The purpose of the candle being lit is so that you can see through the dark. So if you light a candle and you cover it with a vessel, what you're doing is you're covering that light. So therefore, the light can't shine. The true purpose of the light can't be fulfilled. Or put it there under a bed. You don't light a candle and put it under a bed, but set it there on a candlestick. You set it on a candlestick. That they which enter in may see may see the light. So you light a candle and you place it on the, can on the candlestick so that those may be entering that dark room can see the light. For nothing is secret. That should not be made manifest, right? Nothing is secret that can that, that will not be made manifest. All things that are done in secret will be made manifest, will be made known. Be it righteous or wicked, good or evil, as you read in the book of Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. Take heed, excuse me, for nothing is, is secret that should not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that should not be known and come abroad. So there's nothing hid that should not be known and come abroad. I mean, nothing, is not, nothing that's hid isn't going to remain unknown. It's going to be made known. It's going to come abroad. These things are going to be made known. Okay? Let's look at that word abroad in Greek. Turn my volume down so it doesn't be too loud when I play this video, play this uh, audio. Strong's G, 1519. Ice. 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 Into, unto, to, towards, or among. Okay. That's basically the point. So it says, towards and among, right? Let me go back real quick. So nothing is secret that should not be made manifest, neither anything hid that should not be known, and come abroad, or come toward. Okay? Or come into, meaning... To go throughout the world, it's going to be made known, or to go throughout whatever areas it's in. That's be, that's where your actions were done in secret. A person may do something in secret, and it may come abroad amongst the congregation. A person may do something in secret, and it may become abroad throughout the world, depending on how the Most High sees fit to make it manifest. Okay, so that because that word ice means into or abroad, I mean into or towards, so it can come 
abroad or it can come into it can come into um into manifestation by coming abroad in a particular among a particular group of people or throughout even throughout the world. Whichever way the most high sees fit, he could do that. Okay. And I'm gonna get another scripture. Um go to the corners real quick. I believe it was wisdom psalm in the first chapter. Uh, let me see something. Shoot Wisdom Psalm 1. Wisdom Psalm chapter 1 verse 10. For the air of jealousy. Let's see, let's see, let's see if there's something more muted. Right. Uh, Wisdom Psalm 1 and 8. Verse 7. Verse 7. For the Spirit of the Lord filled the world. And that which contained of all things have now to the voice. Right, so the Spirit of the Lord filleth all the world. And that which contained of all things have now to the voice. Right, so the Most High contains all things. His Spirit is in all things. And He has knowledge of the voice. He has knowledge of the things that you speak. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. If he speaketh unrighteous, it can't be hid. Because he hears what? He has knowledge of the voice. Neither shall vengeance when it punisheth pass by him. Because you're going to be punished for the unrighteous things. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. So a question is going to be made into the counsels of the ungodly. Those who think that they're doing their works in, 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 um, in secret. And the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. So the sound of your words will come unto the Lord for the manifestation or, to be, or the things to be made manifest of your wicked deeds. Of your wicked deeds being manifested. That sound is going to come to the Lord. For the air of jealousy heareth all things. And the noise of murmurings is not hid. So the air of jealousy heareth all things. And those murmurings cannot be hid. You can't hide nothing. Therefore, beware of murmuring. Beware of your murmuring, which is unprofitable. And refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that should go for naught, meaning to go for nothing. Nothing that you say, no word so secret that should go for naught. So nothing that you say, regardless of how secret it is, doesn't mean it's because you do it in secret, you're not going to be held accountable. And the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. Okay? Now let's give one more scripture. Um, I gotta write in my mind. Uh, wait one second. I just had it in my head. Uh, damn. See, that sentence I made me forget. But it's another scripture. Okay, I, I remember it. Okay. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes five. Says that which have wings shall tell it matter. Yep. No, that's not it. Yeah, verse ten. Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse twenty. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thoughts. So this is even going into your thoughts. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. In other words, a bedchamber is a secret place. The, what people what goes on in your bedchamber or your bedroom is nobody's business. For so that's being referenced to a secret place. For a bird of the air. Shall carry the voice. That bird of the air is talking about an angel. And that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Right. That which hath wings shall tell the matter. Okay. It's going to tell the matter too. To the Most High. As a matter of fact. It might have been one. In the fifth chapter as well. Let me get that. When it says. um, Well that's what we're talking about. That one was talking about something else. Okay, so, you know, with that being said, I hope you've learned something. Until next time, I'm going to end the show. Shalom.